All right, guys, um, welcome back to ITS um, 140. So hopefully um, all the technical difficulties are sorted out now so we can uh, continue with our discussion. Uh, so today we're talking about uh, dictionaries, as I said before. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen to the dictionary slides. And let me bring this up. So you should be seeing the slides, uh, and we're going to talk about uh, Python dictionaries and you know uh, other sets. So as I said before, the dictionary is a very strong, a very important data structure. Data structure in. Um, in Python, and you're going to incorporate this for your term project. Okay. Hold on, you want now? Uh, so the dictionary, so basically the dictionary is an object, so it's an object in Python that stores a collection of data. Each element consists of what is called a key and a value. So that's a very common thing in computing where you have what are called uh, key value pairs, right? So you're going to have a key and a value, okay? And what that basically means is you can imagine the idea of, you know, um, I have a, you know, ID, let's say, you know, some number, you know, A13, and that's the key, and then the value, <coughs> you know, something like a name, like John. All right, so these are key values, and they can be whatever you want them to be. And they're called key value pairs, okay? So a dictionary consists of that, consists of a set of keys and a set of values, and they're associated. And they're, uh, the, the dictionary is implemented very efficiently, and, <laughs> and so it's, it, it's uh, implemented very efficiently, and so it's really fast, actually for searching data and it's the preferred data structure in a lot of applications in with Python. Okay, so each element in the dictionary consists of a key and a value. And this is often referred to as mapping of key to value. And that's a very common term in computing where you map things, okay? where you're going to map things, <laughs> you know, you have the key and the key is associated with the value. Okay? So this, this is called a mapping, okay? You're mapping the key to the value and so on. The key must be an immutable object, so you can't change it really or anything like that. Um, and it's, 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 it, it has to be a unique uh, value as well. Okay, within the dictionary. Okay, uh, so to retrieve a specific value, uh, you use the key associated with it. The format for creating a dictionary is like this. So this can be any name, it's just a variable. You can, you can give it whatever variable name you want usually something like inventory underscore dictionary or something like that, something that's meaningful. And then after that, just like if you remember with list, we use square brackets, right? In list, we use square brackets. Here in dictionaries, we use curly brackets. You can see the curly brackets there. So we create the curly brackets and then we have a comma separated set of key value pairs, right? So I have here, you know, key one, colon, value one, key two, colon, value two, okay? So that's really the approach. And then, you know, it's, it's as simple as that really, but it's a very powerful, uh, you know, data structure, right, dictionary. So retrieving a value from a dictionary, uh, elements in, in the dictionary are unsorted, okay? The general format for retrieving 
value from dictionary is to just do a dictionary name and then in square brackets you plug in the key whatever the key name is you know it's going to be a string literal that you that you put there or a variable an index and then you're going to retrieve your your value if key in the dictionary uh, then the so if key is in the dictionary then the associated value is returned otherwise you're going to get a key error exception uh, because it couldn't find the key so basically then you probably want to test whether a key is in the dictionary before you actually try to retrieve something and and for this you're going to use operators like the in and not right so in and not should give you you know allow you to, to search you know is this key in you know dictionary.keys for instance which is a function that allows you to return the set of all keys and you can do the same for the set of all values as well okay all right so now here if you want to add elements to the dictionary you can do that at any time um you know usually you want to create you know the the element in the dictionary so adding elements to an existing dictionary uh you can you can always add them so immutable objects um basically to add a new key value pair you just do the following you, you once again grab the dictionary name whatever it is right and then you specify the new key that's going to be unique and then you specify the value that you want in there if the key exists in the dictionary the value associated with it will be changed right so you can you can either add a new one or or change it okay deleting elements from a dictionary uh, you can also do that so to delete a key value pair you just do del as in delete the dictionary name again and the key that you want to delete if key is not in the dictionary this will raise an exception once again. Now, other things that you can do with a dictionary, you can get the number of elements um, or mixing and mixing the data types. So you can use, for instance, the length function here. Okay, so we can use length. This is used to obtain uh, the number of elements in a dictionary, in a dictionary, okay? Uh, the number of elements in a dictionary. Keys must be immutable objects, but associated, associated values can be any type of object that's changeable. One dictionary, one dictionary can include keys of several different immutable types. Okay, so you can have, you know, numbers, letters, et cetera. And then values stored in a single dictionary can be of different types as well. So that's perfectly fine. In fact, you can have dictionaries of objects themselves, and that's you know something a little bit more advanced, but they don't just have to be strings and integers, they can actually be their own little structures. Creating an empty dictionary, that's very simple. You just, let's say A is your dictionary, and then you just do that. And that's it, you created a dictionary. Okay, so creating an empty dictionary and use, it, now you can also use loops, of course. So in this example, using a for loop to iterate over a dictionary and look at the values of it. So to create an empty dictionary, we use this statement. Um, you can also use the built-in function dictionary like that one. Uh, elements can be added to the dictionary as the program executes. So uh, we can do uh, use a for loop to iterate over a dictionary. So in this case, for instance, we could say, you know, for key in dictionary. And that will allow us to just iterate or, you know, I would actually probably call it item. So for item, for item in dictionary. Okay. And that will allow us to iterate through objects in our dictionary. Uh, some other dictionary methods. So we have clear method. Okay, clear method. Uh, we have the get method. 
So with the clear method, uh, you del delete all the elements in a dictionary, leaving it empty. So for instance, the format would be dictionary dot clear. The get method gets a value associated with specified with the specified key from the dictionary. So for instance, you could say dictionary name dot get, right? And then you specify um, the key there. Default is uh, return if the key is not found. And so that's basically what that means. Um, okay. Now the items method, this is, a, this is actually something that's very practical in a dictionary. Uh, it returns all the dictionaries, keys and associated values, right? So that's, you know, you, this will return basically like a list of all the items that you have in there, all the key value pairs as tuples, really. Uh, it, so return as a dictionary view. Each element in dictionary view is a tuple, uh, which contains a key and its associated value. So you're going to end up with like, you know, let's say key one, val one, and then comma, right? So it's a list, and then another key value pair. I'll say key. Two, val two, dot dot dot, and so on. Okay, so that's what it what it returns, and it's actually a very useful um, thing. You say you can also use a for loop to iterate over the tuples in the sequence. Okay, uh, can, you can use a variable which receives a tuple. Uh, or can use two variables which receive key and value. So we'll see how that works, uh, but that's in the for loop. You can either say for item or you can also say for key comma value in. And so it's, it's a way to grab the data. And we'll see that in a while. In a um, other methods, there's the keys method. There's the keys methods, there's the pop method. So the keys method returns all the dictionary keys as a sequence. So you can see that there for you know, dictionary name dot keys is going to give you just a list of keys. So if you want to do, if you want to check if your key is in the keys list, you would use this to obtain that list. The, key, the pop method returns value associated with specified key, but also removes it. Uh, and also and removes that key value pair from the dictionary. So pop returns, but also removes. So this might be useful when you're building certain types of algorithms uh, where you need to implement something like a stack approach that is last in, first out, or something along those lines. Don't worry about that. We'll probably we probably won't use that that much. But it's something that when you when you guys take your data structures class then you will, um, you know, you will, you might use mechanisms like this a little bit more. Okay, and then the default again is return if the key is not found there in this example. There are many, as you might imagine, there are many other um, methods associated with a dictionary. So another, you know, several other ones, uh, we're not gonna look at all of them, but just a few other ones like pop item and values. Right? So you can see pop item and values. Okay, so um, it returns a randomly selected key value pair. So it returns a randomly selected, it returns a randomly selected key value pair Um, and removes the key value pair from the dictionary. So the only difference with the previous one is that this time around, it's going to be a randomly selected. So, if, you know, maybe you have a, a random game or something. For those of you that are doing games, you know, and you want to extract data randomly from a list or a dictionary, this could be the approach to you. So notice the definition, it returns a randomly selected key value pair and removes that key value pair from the dictionary. And it, you know, as usual, the key value pairs are returned as tuples, which, as I said, just looks something like that. 
the values method that returns all the dictionaries values as a sequence. So just like with the keys, you know, we put the dictionary name and then dot values, right? And then we can get the list of values. And then of course here, then we can use a for loop to iterate through all the values as you might imagine. All right, so here's a nice little list of some of the methods that we've talked about already. Uh, clear, get, items, keys, pop, pop item, values. So you got the definitions um, uh, summarized again. All right, so then we're, we're gonna do an example of a dictionary, of course, in a sec, but let me just get through the slides and then uh, we're gonna switch over to the Jupyter Notebook and just uh, try out the dictionary. Now let's talk a little bit about sets. So we all got, all know, you know, what a set is just intuitively. Also, you know, we know it from our math classes. That there's a formal mathematical definition of a set. Um, so basically from, from the point of view of programming, a set, um, it's an object that stores a collection of data in same way as mathematical set. So all items must be unique. The set is unordered and the elements can be of different data types. Right, and then um, the set function basically in Python, uh, it's used to create a set. We won't be using this that much. So this is more just for your information. Um, so if you wanna create an empty set, you can call set. For non-empty set, you can call set with an argument, where argument is an object, again, that contains iterable elements. You know, el you know, any kind of element that you can iterate through. So argument could be a list, a string, or a tuple. If argument is a string, each character becomes a set element. For a set of strings, pass them to the function as a list, okay? So it, it always tries to treat everything as a list. So if you pass a string, it'll make the characters a list. But if you want words in there, then pass a list instead of a string. If the argument contains duplicates, only one of these duplicates will appear in the set. So it's going to perform certain types of operations there for you. So, <coughs> The set function can be used for certain advanced um, applications. So for instance, when you have a lot of data, but you wanna just find the unique words, you know, a set might be appropriate, okay, uh, et cetera. So getting the number of and adding elements, again, you know, you, we have associated methods like, you know, we know the length function, the add method, update, so length returns the number of elements in the set. Um, sets are mutable objects, they can change. So we have the add method that adds an element to a set. And then we have the update method, which adds a group of elements to a set. So notice the difference there between add and update, where we add one element versus adding a group of elements. And here the argument for update must be a sequence containing iterable items so that each of the elements will be added to the set like a list. Now deleting elements from a set, you know, similar approach, uh, remove and discard methods. So remove the specified item from the set. That's basically the item that should be removed uh, is passed to both methods as an argument. Um, you know, both methods being either remove or discard. They behave differently when the specified item is not found in the set. And that's really the difference. Remove, the remove method raises a key error exception, whereas the discard method does not actually raise an exception. So that's really the criteria that would allow you to define which one of the methods you wanna use based on whether you want an error or not, as they will have similar uh, outcomes. The clear method clears all the elements on the set. So you just, you know, clean it basically or, or wipe it. 
using the for loop, the in and the not in operators with a set. Okay. So using the for, you know, for loop in and not, not in, so it's, it's really, I should say, using the for loop in and not in operator. And so those three. So we'll see this in examples, but a for loop can be used to iterate over elements in a set. So for instance, the general format would be for item in set, right? As you might imagine, and that, you know, it's very similar to how you would work with lists. Usually, you know, when I would say you, you, you usually just use uh, a list and it's only when you need specific uh, tasks, you know, like getting rid of unique value or sorry, uh, arriving at unique values, getting rid of duplicates and things like that, that you might use to set function. So here the loop iterates once for each element in the set. The in operator can be used to test whether a value exists in a set. And similarly, as you might imagine, the not in operator can be used to test whether a value does not exist in a set. So that's, that should be pretty straightforward by now because uh, we've, we've done that before. Now, these are more advanced topics like finding the union of sets. I'm not going to get into this. Um, this is important. Uh, you know, this is you know, like a math type of a thing. Uh, but, you know, at this point, I don't really want to get into these kinds of things. I leave that for you guys to read, uh, finding, you know, unions, intersections, uh, finding the difference of sets, uh, finding the symmetric difference of sets. These are all interesting things, certainly, but, you know, a little bit outside of the scope of our run introductory class. Finding subsets and supersets, um, and then serializing objects. Now, this I do want to talk a little bit about what, what a serialized object is, okay? So, as it turns out, we saw in chapter eight, I think it was, we saw that uh, we learned how to store data in files. And basically, we would take strings and, and store them. But what if you have an entire dictionary? Let's say that you have a whole dictionary of data, key values, there's a lot of data in there. Do you actually need to iterate through the whole dictionary line by line and store that data in a text file? You know, format it, do all that work. Or could we just grab the object, the whole dictionary, and save it into a file directly as is so that whenever we need it, we just load it back as a dictionary. As it turns out, we can do that, all right? Um, and that is called serializing objects. So I just want to stress that in Python, that's called serializing objects. So the definition is serialize an object. You convert the object to a stream of bytes that can easily be stored in a file. So that's a, the good example. A good example of this is you do a lot of work, create a very complex dictionary. You don't really want to iterate through it and save it as a comma separated file of rows and columns, instead you just serialize it. And so you can take the whole dictionary, store it on a text file, you know, turn off your computer, the next day you turn your computer back on, you read that dictionary from that serialized object and boom, you're ready to go. And actually it's, it's the preferred and more efficient way of doing it, right? And this in, in the classic example that you, you know, people do a lot of is you know, if they have a dictionary, they just store it as a serialized object. Usually to do that, you're going to need to use a Python library. And, and it, the library is called the pickle library, you know, pickle like the, the thing that you eat. And, and so uh, that, you know, that's just a name. And, and so that's called pickling, and, and which basically means serializing an object. So it's very easy. It's just you call the library pickle and then you say, you know, pickle store, pickle retrieve, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so it's, it's definitely straightforward, but this is a good concept to be aware of the fact that you, you know, you can store, you know, this has to do with saving uh, something. So you can store an object as is into a file and that is called serializing the object and in, in Python in particular is called pickling and we use the pickle library. So you would do something like import 
pickle. All right, and that, that's it. In Python, that's a standard library uh, for this kind of thing. Are there any questions so far? Any questions? All right, let's keep going then. So serializing objects continued. Uh, so to pickle an object, you know, like I just said before, we import the pickle module, okay? Um, you know, basically you open a file for binary writing. So you're gonna call pickle, what is called pickle dump function. And so all you have to do is pickle dump and then the object, whatever it is. For instance, it could be your dictionary. And this would just be the file name that you want to use in the system. And then you close the, the file. Uh, you can pickle multiple objects to one file prior to closing the file. I usually just like, you know, if I have one object, I'm going to put that one object in the pickle in one single pickle file, but you can pickle multiple objects uh, to one file. Okay. Then, you know, obviously the, pro the reverse process is called unpickling, which is basically retrieving pickled, a pickled object. So to unpickle, and I know it sounds pretty funny to be saying these words, but you know, that's how it is. In computing, people are sometimes too creative in the names. Uh, so to unpickle an object, um, you know, again, import the pickle module open a file for binary writing, as you guys already know, open all that. And then you call the pickle.load function. So now instead of pickle dump, it's going to be pickle.load. And then the format pickle load, you know, the file, and then let's say it's a dictionary. So this is going to, you know, be a, you, you're going to need to assign this to your dictionary or something like that. So that's certainly something that you can try in your term project, right? Use the pickle module. And, you know, if you have multiple dictionaries and multiple files, which I would expect that you would do, you can save the whole dictionary as a serialized object to pickle and then, you know, arrive at your, you know, and, and then get the results that you want. So you can unpickle multiple objects from the file reverse the process basically. All right, so that's pretty much it as far as dictionary. So as, as I said, you know, we are at this stage in the semester. Uh, we're getting very close to the end, right? So what I have left is more like the miscellaneous topics that are either very specific to Python or advanced topics. Make sure you, you know, hopefully everything is making sense. Um, and really what I want you to do now, I'm not going to assign more homework for the rest of the semester. Instead, I want you to focus on your term project and I want you to do a good job on that term project. Okay. Um, so in this chapter, we cover dictionaries, including creating dictionaries, inserting, retrieving, adding, and deleting key values, key value pairs. We looked at the for loop and in and not operators and some dictionary methods, okay? Uh, we also looked at sets and we explored some of that. Uh, I skipped this part of, um, you know, I skipped this part of unions, intersections, differences, symmetric differences, subsets, and supersets. So that's will, that will not be on the exam, for instance, at the end of the semester. But if you're, if you're curious about that, um, you can uh, read it on your own. Okay. And then, all, of, of course, we talked about serialized objects and pickling and unpick, unpickling of objects, okay, which is really important. All right. So that's basically um, the lecture. So now let's go ahead and let's try this out. So I'm going to... Uh, bring up a, a browser here. I'm going to switch over to 
this. So I want to remind you where we are. So you should be looking at the calendar right now. Okay, and I just want to stress today, we are um, November 17th. So we are covering dictionaries today. Actually, I'm going to change the subscription. Next Thursday, I'm going to start going over object-oriented pronouns. Okay. So today what we're going to do is, you know, just a short lecture and then I'm going to ask you guys to work on the project and the same and, and, and try to advance as much as you can. On Thursday, I'm going to sit with you guys after, after I introduce the topic of object oriented programming and I just want to see a short demo of where you are with the project. And then I'm going to keep doing that pretty much every, you know, once a week or so until the presentations on December 8th. Okay. So anyway, so uh, this is dictionaries today. So now let's look at uh, doing a, a dictionary. Okay, so I'm going to go to the Jupyter Notebook. I need to share probably. Oh, you're seeing that already. All right, so you should be seeing the Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to create a new one. And you're going to see that this is actually pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So here you can see I have my Jupyter Notebook. And we're going to create a simple dictionary. All right, so I'm going to just create a variable, let's say a curly brackets, right? If you, if you see, and that's basically my dictionary. Then I'm going to say a, you know, key one, and I'm going to assign to it, you know, John, right? So now I'm going to do a print statement. Oops print statement of A, and then I'm going to run this code. Hit run. And you can see there now that I printed out the content, <clears throat> the, the content of the dictionary A. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add another element. You know, I'm going to say A, and I'm going to add another element. This time it's going to be called key two. It can be any name that you want. And the input will be Mary. Okay, so I'm going to once again print the dictionary. All right, and I'm going to run this. I'm going to hit run. And you can see now my dictionary contains two elements you know, key one, John, key two, Mary. Okay. And so that's really the, uh, the approach. That's a dictionary. Now, if I want to iterate through these elements, I could do for item in a dot items. All right, so I can do that. And then I'm just going to print item. All right, so if I go ahead now, and run this, you can see I was able to print it. Now, not like this, where I was printing the whole thing, but I was able to iterate through all the elements in the dictionary. Okay. Another thing I can do is I can say for key comma value in a dot items. All right, so I hit colon, and then now I can do print key and also print val. All right, so this is an, a way of grabbing both elements. So now I'm going to run this. And you can see I was able to, instead of printing them like this, I was actually able to extract the contents. So I printed key one, John, key two, Mary, and so on. Okay, if I want to see the list of all the keys, I can also do print and then in here I'm going to say a dot keys right and now 
I'm going to run that. And you can see it prints out basically the keys that I have in there. Now I can also do, let's say that I want to see if a key is in the list of keys. I can say, um, key two in a dot keys. All right. So now I'm going to run that. And you can see it returns true, which basically means that that key is contained in it. However, if I want to do key three, right, in keys, I can do the same. So this one returns false. And that's basically it. That's how a dictionary works. So I, I have shown you guys how to, um, how to work on this, okay? How to, how, how, a dic how to create a dictionary, how to add data to the dictionary and how to iterate things. All right guys, so, um, that's basically the lecture for today. Um, I just really wanted to introduce one topic, which was the dictionary. In uh, the rest of the time that you have today, what I'm gonna suggest is that uh, you work, you know, either by yourselves or with your teammates and start thinking about how to incorporate this dictionary into your term project, how you will store your data, All right? So, you know, basically we'll stop here for today. Um, work on this. It's not a homework, but work on this in the project. And then on Thursday, as I said, we're going to do breakout rooms and I'm going to, I want to see what you guys came up with. All right. So how did you implement uh, the dictionary to your term project? All right. So basically please work on this. Um, and that's, that's it for today. All right. Are there any questions? Actually, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So in our group, we're trying to put all our code on GitHub. Yep. And like when we do it, they will allow any of us to edit whatever code somebody else has put on GitHub. What do you mean? To to elaborate what Keelan was saying, I'm in this group. We're we're having trouble like in general with GitHub. We don't really know how to like uh, share code or like, or, and just stuff like that in general. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, let me do this with, as far as GitHub, um, I'm gonna ask uh, Mitch to create a video, kind of a, a little video tutorial of how to work with, um, with GitHub, what you're saying, like adding files, sharing files, and then I'll post that on, um, on, the, on the channel so that you guys can take a look at it. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, it won't be that detailed, okay? But first of all, GitHub is a, is a tool used for, you know, really extensively in Linux. Uh, in Windows, I'm assuming most of you are using Windows at this time in your studies. Uh, so you'll, you're probably just using like the GUI interfaces. But yeah, um, usually you, at least you put up your code there, but I will ask him to create a little bit of bit video that is a little bit more help on how to share the data. Make sense? Yep. All right. So again, guys, you know, I've introduced the dictionary today. What I want, as I said, I'm not doing homework assignments anymore. Instead, every, everything that we do from now on until the end of the semester is going to be a topic that I want you to implement in your term project. Okay. So today we're doing, we did dictionary sets. I'm not, you know, you don't have to introduce sets into your term project, but you do have to do uh, dictionaries, okay? So I want you between today and Thursday to get together with your teammates and let's say that you're building a budgeting system, right? Figure out, you, you probably already had an idea of how you were storing, you know, how you were storing your data. Now use this dictionary to store the data, also use the pickle library. Oh, um, so I forgot the pickle library. Uh, you're gonna do import pickle. Okay, that's basically it. 
And then after that, you know, you, um, you can um, save and store data. So I'll show you, I actually have in my, in my GitHub, yeah, in my GitHub. So I don't know if you guys have ever visited my GitHub, but um, I have a lot of code there. Where is that? Here it is. So if you click on GitHub and then, um, where is it? Probably extraction. And then I know I have one here in speech. And then, all right. And then probably. Um, yeah, you can see I'm using pickle here, import pickle, the library, and then an example of the use of pickle would be um, here it is. So I have uh, the example of how to use the pickle. So load dictionary, Gina it's called, um, and write dictionary, Gina, for instance, right? So if I'm going to write, I already have the pickle object, right? So then I'm gonna say with open a file name, right? That I can specify WB, which means write binary as handle pickle dump something, right? So I'm just gonna copy this um, into my notebook code here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then, oops. Load. All right. So there you go. All right, so copy the whole thing. But anyway, so these are these are basically the ways that you can um, do this. Here, don't worry about this self. This just has. This will make sense on Thursday when we start talking about object-oriented programming. For now, here, what you would do is, you know, file one.txt. So file one dot txt, and then the same here. File two dot txt. Okay. So as you can see, you you basically, you know, and this is too much of an thing. Okay, now this assumes you have some kind of a dictionary, so let's call it B, right? And so now we have our dictionary there. We open, and actually it'll probably be the same file, so I should have just given it the same. All right, so, and actually the extension doesn't really matter, but you could say maybe .pickle just to kind of indicate what it is. So with open file .txt write, that means you're gonna write to this, so you're gonna say as handle, Pickle dump, and what do you write? You're gonna write B, the whole dictionary. You see, you know, imagine that you've done all of this process up here and you've added all the data. Then, uh, now that, you know, later on another day, you wanna read the data. So you're gonna do with open file one, read binary as handle. And now you're going to reload the dictionary to B and you're just gonna say pickle.loads handle dot read and then once you have b there uh let's say actually temp. let's say b temp just so it's a little bit more clear b temp okay and then you're going to assign to your dictionary which in this case would be b okay and that's it you guys see that 
So this will create a file in your current working directory with your dictionary. So actually, I'm going to call this one uh, B1, right? B1. So to make it different from B, and now I'm going to do a print B1. So if we run this, and you can see it worked. Uh, the dictionary was empty, but um, what I could do is I could say B, you know, and I could say something like, you know, hammer. Oops. Hammer. And then the value, you know, price, right? $15. Price of a hammer, let's say. And so now I run it again. And there you go. You see that? But if you notice in between, you were able to actually store your dictionary as a pickle object in your file system. And then you read it from the file system back. Uh, does this make sense, guys? What I just did with pickle, is it, do you understand? Guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Does it make sense how this works? Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so I don't know, you know, so, but um, it's, to me, it seems simple, but I don't know if, if you get it. So again, you know, the idea is that you serialize the, 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 the dictionary, okay? You serialize the dictionary B, you add it, you know, something, I don't know what you're doing. That's why, as I said, I want you to work on this. So all these topics that we're going to be covering for the rest of the semester are going to be kind of like this. So are going to be a day topic. And I'm just, instead of giving you homework, I'm just gonna say, add this to your project. So for instance, today, we looked at three things really. Dictionaries, uh, sets, and pickle. Of those three, I just want you to implement dictionaries and pickle into your term project. So now what you have to think about is, this you can pretty much use as is, but you will need to think about overall what data you're storing you know, how you're iterating, how you're adding data, how you're retrieving data and, and using your data, okay? Uh, so you're gonna have to use this code for that. And that's it, that's, that's kind of what I want you to do. So implement this to the project. Next, uh, on Thursday, we will look at object-oriented programming. That will probably take, you know, more than one lesson um more than one day so but as, as this it'll be the same i'm going to introduce uh, you know part of object oriented programming classes and everything and then i'm going to ask you guys to work on that and implement it in your project you know then probably we're going to cover guis uh, or the more advanced topics like of object oriented programming like subclassing and inheritance uh, and then, you know, GUIs, and then also I'm going to ask you to input, try to implement that in your project and so on. Okay. You know, you know, we're getting towards the end of the semester. And so given that you're, you're freshmen, um, I want to, I do usually in, in, in more advanced classes, you know, you have to work outside of class, but here, you know, I want you, I want to kind of encourage you to work on the project um, during class as much as possible. All right, so that's basically the plan um, for this today. Does this make sense, guys? Makes sense yeah. to me. All right, any questions? No questions? Okay, so as I said, so you're, what I want you to do is, this is going to be due on Thursday, right? On Thursday, we're going to meet again, cover object oriented, but then we're going to create the breakout rooms again. And I'm going to um, basically see what you're going to do. Okay. So actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the breakout rooms again. Okay. And I'm just going to switch between groups and see if, um, See if, 
kind of push you to get started with this. However, one thing I'm going to do, because I've noticed I always have trouble with those breakout rooms and, um, when I'm creating the video, is I'm going to stop this session, generate the video, come back and create the breakouts, okay? So that it's two separate things, okay? So, so I'm going to do that um, and I'll be back in a sec, okay? Just so I can generate this video without errors. 